The clock that drives all of the operations on a circuit board tends to be pretty fast. For example, you hear things like a 3.6 gigahertz processor, but not all the devices on that processor board, all the devices internal, external, not all of them are capable at running at those high speeds. So we need to slow that frequency down a little bit. And we do that with something called a divide by two circuit. Now the divide by two circuit is actually quite simple. May take a little bit of, of, uh, of, of close examination to figure out exactly how it works, but truly it is done with a single D flip-flop. So we have this D flip-flop and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pick, let's, let's just say rising edge. Okay, so we've got this rising edge D flip-flop. Now, the way the circuit works, and actually the circuit is quite simple, what you have is the driving frequency going into the clock. Now, the idea is to take the inverse, the opposite of what is stored, and make that as the input data that we're working with. So, for example, let's just go ahead and draw a little timeline to show how this is working. First of all, let's just talk about the frequency. The frequency, we're just going to have some sort of very fast set of pulses that are going in to this clock. Now, the idea is, what is on Q? Now, let's go ahead and start out with an initial value, just at some point in time. Let's just say that it's a zero. Let's just say it's a logic zero. Now, the idea is that with a rising edge latch, we are going to copy D to Q on each one of these rising ed edges. So I'm going to mark all the rising edges here to show when we're going to be doing that copying. So that's when we're going to copy. But the question is, is what are we copying? Well, remember that Q, whatever Q contains, the opposite of what Q contains is coming on Q bar. So input into D is the opposite of what's currently stored inside the D flip-flop. Huh? Well, let's look at this. Right now, if there's a zero on Q, that means there's a one on Q bar and a one going into the D latch. Now, it might help to know that whenever you're, whenever you're clocking something in, when you're storing something into a flip-flop, the, the value that's at D has to be stable for just a little while before it will, before a change will be recognized to be clocked in. Let me try that again. That didn't come out quite right. I get a clock pulse and that clock pulse is going to copy D into the box and subsequently to Q. It's going to copy it to Q. The, if D changes at exactly the same time that the frequency changes, it's the earlier value. It's the value that had been on there that is going to be copied to Q due to propagation changes and delays and so forth inside the box. So what happens at one of these rising edges? Well, if Q is a zero, that means D contains a one. And when we get this rising edge, we're going to change Q to a one and it's going to flip it. It's going to invert it. All right. So now, at this point, a 1 is on Q and a 0 is on Q bar. So coming into the D input, you've got a 0, the opposite of what's stored in the box. So we get another rising edge here and a 0 is going to be stored to Q. And in fact, at every one of these rising edges, we're just going to take the opposite of what's in Q and store it to Q. And as you see, you get a waveform that is half, it's pulsing half as fast as the frequency that's going into the clock input. Now, it seems kind of funny, but that frequency is going to be what's driving the changes. So that has to go into that driving input, the one that's causing the changes, which is that clock. Now, it has to be a flip-flop. This can't be a transparent latch. And the reason why it can't be a transparent latch is because, remember, there are active states, and as soon as we go to that active state, what's going to happen is you're going to get D and Q just alternating back and forth as fast as they can. All you want to do is just simply capture D, 
the moment that that clock rises. And there we have got a divide by two circuit. We have divided the frequency by two. So during one period of Q, you actually had two periods of the frequency. Now, that seems like, well, okay, if this is 3.6 gigahertz, then that's just simply, you know, it's, what is it, 1.8 gigahertz. So it's, it's a little slower, but what if we want something even slower? Well, you cascade another one onto that. And so now what we do, and we'll just call this one Q0, and now if we have Q1, what gonna, what's gonna happen, and use this now, and in fact, maybe I've, I've taken up too much of my board space here, just simply erase a little bit here. What if I put another one here? So I've got D, clock, Q, and Q bar. And the circuit itself is quite simple. You just connect Q bar into D. But now we take this Q, which we're gonna call Q naught, we'll put that as the clock into the next one, which is driving Q sub one. Now what happens is on the rising edges of Q naught, we're going to flip Q. So we start out at zero, then it goes to one, then it goes to zero, it goes to one, goes to zero, goes to one. By cascading two divide by two circuits, we've divided our frequency by four. In the next lesson, what we're gonna see is how one of these circuits can be used to do something that's vital whenever it comes to the operation of a processor, and that's keeping time.